Hi there. I am David Agus. I am a CBS News contributor and a professor of medicine at the University of Southern California. And I'm here to answer your questions on the coronavirus vaccine. Well, let's get to it. All right. Number one, of the potential vaccine candidates, which one should I take? Is one better? Should I take all three to maximize efficacy? The bottom line is they are all great. They all block 100% getting very ill or hospitalized to the virus, which is the goal, and they are all remarkably safe with the same safety profile across the board. So I would take the first one you could get. Um, so if you're off for one, I would grab it because a day sooner means a day sooner you will have immunity, which is obviously better for all of us. Um, number two, if I take the vaccine, does that mean I can travel, roam around freely with no mask and do all the things I pre did pre-COVID? No. When you take the vaccine, you will dramatically reduce your risk of getting the virus and also eliminate the chance of being hospitalized. But you still, there's a small percentage that may get a little runny nose or a little cold and you can spread the virus. So it is critical that we all wear the masks until the virus numbers come down dramatically, which probably will be the beginning of the summer next year. If I already had COVID and I have antibodies, do I need the vaccine? Yes, we don't have a test really for what we call neutralizing antibodies. So the antibodies you have are general, and it doesn't mean you have immunity to the virus. So everyone who prior had the virus needs to get this vaccine to build antibodies and T cells to fight it. Number four, I have allergies and I'm on different medications. Is it okay to get this vaccine? And the answer is uniformly yes. There is no interaction with medications in this vaccine. So it is really important that we all get it, especially people with other medical conditions, which goes to the next question. If I have a suppressed immune system, is it safe to take this vaccine? And yes, mainly because there is no live virus in this. So if you have cancer, Guillain-Barre syndrome, autoimmune diseases, it is okay, it is safe to take this vaccine. Is the vaccine safe for children? And the answer to that is we just don't know yet. In the United States, we do clinical trials first in adults. And if it's safe, we then will try it in pregnant women and children. And so that stage is coming now. And so we have to test the safety first in younger kids and in pregnant women before we say it's okay for them to take it. What are some of the normal side effects and how could they last? This is critical. Most people get side effects, which is good. It's your immune system reacting to this vaccine. A pain in the arm, the injection site, fever, chills, fatigue, all of which are common, all of which go away after 24 to 48 hours. So it is critical that you're aware of this. If you feel bad the next day, that's pretty normal and it will get better. And Tylenol is a remarkable antidote for most of the side effects related to this vaccine. And number eight, how long after getting the vaccine do we know we're protected? And how long will the protection last? Well, it is one week after the second shot. So the uh, second shot in most of them is a day 21 with the Moderna's day 28 a week later. So three or four weeks after the first shot, you will have immunity. How long will it last? Well, we know it lasts at least six months. And my gut is it will last at least a year, though hopefully is significantly longer. So probably a year or two, and then we may need a booster shot. It's not clear. But we at least buy that immunity, just like the flu shot. It may be mixed in. So every year you get a flu shot with a little bit of the COVID-19 vaccine. If we get the vaccine, number nine, is there a chance you'll be asymptomatic and transmit the virus? Well, with the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, the answer is no. With the other two vaccines, Moderna and Pfizer, they did not test this, so we don't know yet. And so that's why wearing a mask is still going to be critical after the vaccine is out. Number 10, how much will it cost me the vaccine? And the answer is zero. The government has paid for all of the vaccines in the country. There is an administration fee in uh, most, if not all cases, it's covered by insurance. And those without insurance, the states are figuring out a way, most of them at least, to cover those costs. So we can all get the vaccine without worrying about the economics of it, which I think is critical. So a few questions, a few answers. Thank you for asking them, and we're happy to answer more going forward.